Welcome to Life Encouragement from the Father's Heart. Today's topic is Knowing God in My Devastation. My name is Sharon Farley. Today we're going to read a scripture from Isaiah 43 verse 10. It says, You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Isaiah spoke this word to Israel during a time when there was devastation for them both as individuals and as a nation. They were being attacked by their enemies, and this had brought devastation, war and violence, famine, loss of homes and jobs, exile into a foreign land, and even death. The word devastated means destroyed or ruined, or can even mean where something has caused severe and overwhelming shock or grief. Does that perhaps sound a little familiar to you? Has there perhaps been a situation or circumstance that has caused an overwhelming sense of grief or loss? And perhaps you don't know how to move forward from that and thrive again. I know that in my own heart, when devastation came, there was just that little bit of doubt that God was really there for me. For everyone else, maybe. But for me, I didn't really know. There was great fear and anxiety that came into my heart. And it was difficult to trust after holding on for such an extended period of time. Yet in our verse from Isaiah 43, God gives us great comfort. Firstly, he says that we are his witnesses. We have seen his mighty works, experienced answers to prayer, and have known his presence in our lives in so many ways. During hard times, it's easy to forget what God has done for us in the past, because the things of the present are so in our faces. And yet, we have experienced the goodness of God. He has always been there for you. And with you, why would he leave you now? His character is faithful and true, and he hasn't left you. He says that he has chosen us. And because we've been chosen, we can know that we are constantly in his care and never out of the gaze of his loving eyes. That is a particular place of security and safety, of belonging. He is not going to let you go out of his hand. You belong. You are his treasure. And then there is a reason why we have been chosen. To know, believe, and understand that he is God. It sometimes can seem as though our faith and belief has become like a vanishing mist in the extent of our desperation. How do we continue to believe in God's promises for us? When times of devastation come, this can be particularly difficult to do, but actually presents an opportunity for us to draw closer to God's heart and his comfort instead of all the ways that we comfort ourselves. I read something written by Derek Prince as he was talking about his own difficulties in terms of faith for healing. And he quoted the well-known verse, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ from Romans 10, 17. He said that he was arrested by these two words, faith comes. We don't always feel like it comes, but faith comes. How does it come? It comes by hearing and hearing And hearing. So the knowing part of our verse in Isaiah 43 10, where it says we have been chosen to know, helps to show us how faith comes. Firstly, by knowing God. God wants to have relationship and fellowship with us. He already knows everything about us, 
but he wants us to know and experience his love more deeply. He wants us to know him. Secondly, to know his character, to read his word, to take our thoughts and doubts captive by replacing them with promises from his word. Number three, to know his promises. This is how we fight our battles. Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well, holding on to faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and so have suffered shipwreck with regard to the faith. That's from 1 Timothy 1 verse 18. Hold on to his promises that he has given you. And then number four, know his heart. Pray, speak to him, pour out your heart. He's not afraid of your emotion and he will pour out his heart to you. So we have a choice to make every day. Will we believe the voice of the enemy above the voice of God? Do we believe more in the power of Satan to harm us than in God's power to keep us? Has God become too small? In our eyes. Our verse says, I am He. He alone is God and there is no other. If that is where you have found your heart to be in the devastation, maybe believing another voice instead of the voice of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you can get out of that place right now. Return your heart to the Lord. And he will be there to meet you with his open arms of love. I'd like to finish off with this verse from Mark 10, 27. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Would you like to join me as I pray? Dear Lord God, My situation has been devastating and my focus has seemed to be filled with it, consumed by it. Thank you that you have reminded me today that you have chosen me to know you, believe and understand that you are God and there is no other. Please would you forgive me where I have made you too small in my eyes and I have made the circumstance larger than your presence in my life. Lord, today I choose to believe that all things are possible with you when I believe. May you increase and be magnified in my life, even in the storm. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And I have made you too small in my eyes. Forgive me And I have believed In a lie That you were unable To help me But now, oh Lord I see my wrong Heal my heart And show yourself strong Oh, lift 
it up. 